it's always comes up that uh, here we have this building, pretty good sized building, brick building. Uh, what what will become of it? Well, that's been in the that's been in the discussion since day one. Right. And and certainly uh, the administration, the Memorial and Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital are fully cognizant that that's an issue that they have to deal with in this community, and and they're not going to be. Uh, a Walmart, if you will. They're not going to leave an empty building boarded up on the main drag of Lincoln, Illinois. It's a residential community primarily, and they understand they have a, an obligation there. I, I can't sit here and tell you there's an answer to that question at this point. I can tell you what the choices are, and, and, and the hospital is fully aware of that. If they can find someone that can have a use for that building that is compatible with that neighborhood, they will try to put it to that use. Mm -hmm. If someone can use the building as it exists, uh, it's not going to be boarded up in an eyesore, much like LDC is out on the other side of town. Yeah. There are there is funds <coughs> provided if necessary, and this isn't the, necessarily the goal, but in the overall project budget, there are funds necessary to raise that building and turn that into green space in Lincoln if that's what's ultimately needed to keep that from being an eyesore. So I want to emphasize you're saying that that is an option. That is that's an option. not on the planning board. Right? That's, I want to be very clear they, about I that. Mean, that's not a goal. It's no. just I, I no. want to make everybody that, that has that question aware that it's been considered. It, uh, the hospital administration is very aware that it is an issue in this community and they don't want another boarded up LDC on 8th Street. Yeah. And the hospital is committed to not letting that happen. If they can't find a compatible use and if they can't find someone that can use it in, an, in, in a way that would be compatible with the neighborhood and tearing it down becomes the only option, they will commit that area to green space in the, in the, in or development for residential or whatever is appropriate for that neighborhood. But they're going to be cognizant of that and will deal with it. Well, and thank you uh, for bringing up the part that it will be compatible with the neighborhood. That's a nice neighborhood, a very nice neighborhood. And uh, you're not going to put in uh, something that's going to make coal smoke or something. They, they probably spent more time on that question the last two years than ever before we started this. Uh -huh. They wanted to make sure that that was not going to be a building that was just going to be left empty. And uh, they have all the, all the options out there. And, uh, and that's one thing they had to guarantee me when when I decided mm -hmm. that I'd be co-chairman is what that building either has to be taken care of, sold uh, something that would be used in there, or become green space. Well, and it's it's uh, it's kind of a once burned twice cautious thing. You know, we do have that abortion out there that used to be LDC, and I think people think we should, we sure don't need any more of that. Yeah. Well, fortunately, we don't have the politicians' help to make this decision. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, yes. Sure glad I got out of politics. That's certainly, that's certainly, uh, we, we, we hope to open this. Uh, we originally had hoped to open this hospital in February of 2011. Uh, that has been pushed back just a bit for a couple of very significant reasons. One, Judy, you mentioned the weather. But secondly, there's also a federal funding program that's become available uh, for application. There's no guarantees that the that we will get it. But the road that leads into the hospital off of Lincoln Parkway as designed was going to be a three-legged signalized intersection on Lincoln Parkway. Mm -hmm. So if you were headed south on Lincoln Parkway, there'd be a right-hand turn lane. If you were headed north, there'd be a left-hand turn lane at the signal, and it would go in and it would go around to the emergency room, which happens to be on the northwest side of the new building or the west side of the new building, and the road mm -hmm. would stop at that point. They, the hospital has is now going through the process of applying for a, a federal grant uh, to try and get funding that's available through some of these new highway programs to install that road, which actually loop clear through the property and come out on Taylor Drive by Lincoln Chrysler Dodge and Jeep, where the stop sign is on Taylor Court and Route mm -hmm. 10. So if that funding were available, they could loop that road from stoplight to stoplight on Route 10 and Lincoln Parkway, which would be a tremendous advantage for, for everyone, for, oh my, for yes. patient care. Now, the timing of that grant funding has put us a little bit on hold on our road construction because it's not a reimbursable grant. It's a, it's a grant that if you're awarded the money, you have to spend it after you get it. So they, they've had to slow down on the road construction until they know if they're going to get the grant or not. So that's probably the time frame. I think that grant decision will be made sometime in the September or October time frame. So we probably have pushed our opening date back maybe, maybe a couple of months mm -hmm. to, to try and make this a, a better enhancement for the hospital through this road grant. Well, let's all pray for the 
yeah, the awarding of that absolutely. grant. That's just another little point in the, in the planning of this whole thing on your planning map where you put your little pins in done. That's an option, open option. We would just have to wait. Right. We have to wait on that because we can't go. Mm -hmm. the, uh, obviously, the budget included the construction of the road, and, and there's <laughs> always been an ultimate goal in this overall project of uh, connecting that road to Route 10. Keep in mind, this is 58-acre site that Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital bought. And if you go out there and you see the new Castle Manor, which is a phenomenal facility, really? St. Clair's Manor's done a wonderful job with that. And, and they, have, they have designs over the years of improving that campus. There's also room at the hospital for improvement. And keep in mind that the doctors, the, the Springfield Clinic doctors in this new hospital facility, also have a new building being built. So we're going to have a new physician's offices out at the new building. And they certainly have room to grow with other compatible uses on this, on this, what now is the Castle Manor, Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital campus, because there's a lot of room up there. Well, the clock came up to 9 o'clock, doggone it. Uh, Judith, I want to thank you, uh, Bill Bates and John Gazzardo, very, very much for sharing your uh, talent and your enthusiasm uh, to tell us a little about uh, our new project out there, of which we're all going to be proud at some point in time, and that'll be very soon now. Uh, we always try to close uh, Viewpoint with a quote or two. Uh, I have one here in Napoleon Hill. I don't know which hill that is. Uh, <laughs> old Knapp said, The starting point for all achievement is desire. Keep this constantly in mind. We certainly have the desire for our new hospital. Amen. Thank you for Viewpoint. Thanks Thank for you having for us. Having us. <clears throat>